Things are getting a little dicey in the world of Blizzard. Paladins teases its new enemy soul power to shield bearing champion. Astelia Online is an interesting new way to evolve your class. And it seems like Terra's new update is all about its card collection system. <laughs> What's good everyone, James Blonde here with your weekly recap for gaming news and announcements of the week of October 11th, 2019. Starting up the news, of course, RuneFest was this past week, and with the major event came a ton of huge announcements. First, RuneScape is getting a new skill called Archaeology. This skill will lead players to new biomes and offer fantastic rewards, including new familiars, to help you in combat. Last summer's The Land Out of Time content is going to be getting some love in as well. In the Ranch Out of Time, you can raise and nurture powerful primal beasts to yield primal extract. This new feature will serve as an expansion to both the farming and herb lore skills. A farming guild was also teased, as was the remote farming machine. The Desperate Times quest will receive a follow-up with the Desperate Measures quest, of course, and a new Elder God Wars dungeon will arrive in 2020. For the full breakdown, check out Jason's coverage of the event over on MMOS.com, where there's tons to talk about. Next up in the news, Glyph Worlds began the early access program for their free-to-play RTS War selection this past week. The game will launch as a free-to-play game with an optional subscription to unlock subscriber-only matches, which feature additional technologies in each era. They will also be able to make private matches and participate in votes to determine features coming to the game. Players will start off in the Stone Age in each game and choose a path to victory by advancing through eras and modifying your culture according to their playstyle. For example, advancing through the Iron Age as Asia confers different bonuses than going through as a European Empire. These options let players customize the way they play and choose the strategy that suits them. Single and multiplayer modes add variety to the gameplay, especially the Armageddon mode. A massive 62 players will be supported in this mode, with the smallest empires getting bombarded with meteors as time progresses in the Armageddon mode, forcing constant conflict as the pressure to expand continues to build. Why are you going to pick on the little guys? Man, even RTS games are getting a Battle Royale style mode these days. And speaking of which, Bohemia Interactive is proud to celebrate 2.5 million Vigor players, and with that they've released update 1.1 Bridges. This update adds a new map called Brattlin Bridges, and a new in-game event, Buried Ache. New weapons, stamina additives, team killer detection, and more also arrived in this update. A full list of these add-ons can be found at the link in the description below. Not a very big update, but an update nevertheless. The recently launched Astelia Online received a major update this past week, which brought a brand new feature to the game, Class Evolution. When a player hits level 50, they can evolve into one of three specializations, which extends the amount of experience a character can earn. This EXP is converted towards star ranks in their chosen evolution class. When they reach the first star rank, they will be granted one of two exclusive abilities. At rank 3, the second is unlocked. In between these ranks, additional growth will be available in specific character stats, depending on the evolution chosen. Ultimately, once a character has reached their fifth star rank, they will be granted a permanent awakening to one of their core abilities. The types of exclusive skills, stats, and awakened ability can be seen by opening the character window and then clicking on the evolution info button. These exclusive abilities and stats will be retained so long as you stay in this evolution and have the star rank to have them unlocked. But players are not limited to a single evolutionary path. Earned 5 star awakened skills will be retained even after switching paths. Exclusive skills, earned EXP, and stats however will not. Definitely a big feature update. In other news, the Nintendo Switch finally receives its first fully featured card game in Eternal from Direwolf Digital. The Switch version of the game also features cross-platform play with Steam, iOS, Android, and Xbox One editions of the game. Direwolf also announced a new cross-platform expansion for Eternal entitled The Flame of Zolta. This seventh set for Eternal adds over 200 new cards. There are new mechanics and gameplay features to utilize, and is set on an ancient world beneath the dying sun. Gym-clad paladins channel their power to vanquish their foes, and gladiators work towards a grand legacy in a grand arena. That's only a taste of the story in the Flame of Zolta, which is available now. In some not-so-happy CCG news, the Hearthstone community has been roiling this past week over the banning of a Hong Kong-based pro player Blitzchung for one year following his show of solidarity with protesters in Hong Kong. 
If you're not up to date on this situation, you can find tons of discussions over the matter on YouTube and social media. Apparently, Blizzard also dismissed the two Taiwanese commentators who were part of the segment, even though they were unaware of Blitzchunk's plan to make such a declaration. The outrage over the banning has even spawned the hashtag Boycott Blizzard, with much of the gaming community and even a pair of US government officials condemning the company's actions. Yikes. Blizzard. Wasn't expecting that. In the final bit of CCG news, sorta, Terra has a massive update coming to PC on October 15th with Skywatch Aerial Island, which includes a card collection system. The upcoming content release closes out the Skywatch series of updates for the game and brings a new landmass for players to explore, plus new systems that enable players to enhance and customize their characters. The major part of the update is the card collection system. This will give players a new way to customize their stats to fit their role or playstyle. An introductory quest will open up for level 11 or higher characters, but of course players of all character levels will be able to benefit from this system. Players can earn card fragments while engaging in their usual activities, including completing dungeons, killing big ass monsters, and playing PvP modes, combining 20 card fragments together to unlock a full card for their collection. Each individual card will grant passive stat boosts for your character, with certain card combinations unlocking more powerful buffs. Next up, it's time to get ready for the ultimate pirate experience on the Xbox One, as Atlas is now live on the console. It's time to build your ship, recruit a crew, and sail the high seas. The biggest part of the game is that it features full cross-platform support so that Xbox and PC players can do battle in a shared world. The Xbox One edition of the game even has mouse and keyboard support, so both sides are on equal footing. Hopefully by this time the game has worked out its kinks. It took several years before Ark was somewhat optimized and felt polished. Maybe it's the same thing for Atlas. Also this past week, Paladins showed off a teaser trailer for their newest character, Raum, Rage of the Abyss. Raum will arrive in the game with the Damned Frontier update. Raum is a frontliner, or tank, who collects soul shards from his enemies to power his personal shields. It's pretty brutal. He can cover large distances with his abilities and disrupt enemies with a powerful stun. It's also worth noting that he only gains shields through combat, so hesitating or avoiding conflict leaves him vulnerable. Alongside Raum, Paladins will launch a brand new Wild West Battle Pass in the Damn Frontier update. 100 levels of Wild West style content awaits anyone playing while it's active, including Hustler Strix, Bounty Hunter Lex, Safecracker Khan, and Gunslinger Tyra, alongside avatars, sprays, emotes, and more. Speaking of new content, Kurtz Pell has a ton of new content coming, and Volume 3 of Kurtz Pell's Intelligence Briefing is here to give you the scoop. This update adds the first heavy-hitting heal and support karma weapon, the Sacred Guardian. Provided by Lime, this new NPC is here and offers the first support weapon. This weapon can be purchased on Steam or for free through an in-game method. Players will collect CP and AP to purchase it. The Sacred Guardian Starter Pack unlocks the three missions related to Lime and the mission map. After completing the missions, players can play to receive additional rewards such as costumes, karma crystals, and more depending on their affinity with the NPC line. This update will also include a massive balance update comprised of feedback provided directly by Chris Bell's dedicated players and in tandem with the dev team via the Elthica Proving Ground, a closed test server where players and developers provide feedback on everything from the game balance to features, interface layout, and game concepts. Additional features being added in the update include three epically immersive Lime-themed PvE missions, a field of vision slider that tailors the game experience better for players, and an additional accessory drop for all existing PvE bosses. Pretty decent sized update, actually. And finally, if you've been living under a rock, haven't had internet, or don't tune into MMOs as much as you should, you might have noticed Destiny 2 launched recently on Steam as a free-to-play game. If you've never played it or have been on the fence about trying it, or better yet, haven't purchased Borderlands 3 because you, for some reason, don't want anything to do with the Epic Game Store exclusive, because you might have something against a launcher or something, there's never been a better time. With the free portion of the game, players receive all of the game's content through its first year, so that doesn't include the newly launched Shadowkeep update, which is receiving a lot of great reception so far. Good news for existing Destiny 2 players, you can migrate your account over to Steam so you don't lose that grind time on your accounts. Now that the game is available for free, you'll have plenty of time to get through the existing content before deciding to take the plunge into Shadowkeep and the new Garden of Salvation raid. I just really wish they planned to go free to play just a few months sooner. 
my gaming time is tied up in Borderlands 3 at the moment. So much so that I'm even sad to say that I'm actually okay with the unexpected new 2020 launch date for Doom Eternal. Just saying. Anyway, guys, that's about it for all the major news and announcements for this week. For more information on the news topics, check the links in the description below. Feel free to discuss the news or even more news in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that little bell icon to get notifications, and of course, share this video. But until next time, guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.